haven't worn powder foundation probably since middle school. I've just never trusted it to give me the coverage that I need and the wear time I need. However, I got curious because Urban Decay just put out their Stay Naked The Fix powder, which is supposed to be medium to full coverage, up to 16 hours of wear, and I'm like, powder can do that? So in this video, I'm gonna put the Fix powder to the test, but then I'm gonna find out, can a drugstore powder foundation do the same thing at a fraction of the price? If you're new here, hi, I'm Miranda. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget, beauty, fashion, and lifestyle. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. Let's find out whether you should splurge or save on powder foundation. All right, day one of this foundation battle, we are just going to be testing out the Urban Decay Stay Naked The Fix Powder Foundation. I picked out the shade 30WY. Hopefully it's a match. I was just going off of pictures. But this is supposed to be a long wear up to 16 hours foundation with a natural real skin finish made with Moringa Seed Extract with buildable medium coverage. So here we are. Ooh, that's looking a little bit light. Oh. Okay, so this does come come with an application sponge and it's actually infused with charcoal, I think, but I'm gonna use a brush. Here we go. I do have some blemishes here. I'm excited to see the coverage. Okay, it's definitely a little light for me, but we're gonna roll with it. This would be my winter shade if I hadn't gone to Jamaica two months ago. <laughs> I just hold on to tans for months after they happen. I feel like it's easier to kind of make things work when a foundation is too dark for you. When it's too light, there's not a lot you can do. <laughs> the coverage is pretty impressive for a powder. I had this spot that was pretty aggressive and probably the most obvious blemish on my face right now. And you can still kind of see it, but it's definitely much more evened out. I will say though, the finish is really nice. Even as I'm layering this up for the coverage, I don't feel like I'm mattifying my face over and over again. It feels flexible and comfortable, and the finish is very smooth. My pores are like non-existent. I am gonna take my butter bronzer though and try to add some color back to my face and see if we can make this look a little bit more natural for my skin tone. I am also curious to see how makeup layers over it because I'll just be putting on a light face today. All right, I am back. Here is my light makeup look of the day. I think I still look a tad pale, but we're gonna roll with it. I used all powder products on my face in terms of contour, blush, highlight, and everything applied over top the foundation very smoothly. And at these beginning stages, my skin still looks very smooth. The powder is not settling into any fine lines, which I find very, very surprising. I will check back in with you and share how this wears throughout the day. All right, I am back and we are just short of eight hours that I've been wearing this powder foundation from Urban Decay. Overall, very impressed. I've kind of just been checking myself in the mirror throughout the day and I have a lot less breakdown than I thought I would have. Now, in case you don't know, I have combo skin. I do get oily, especially around my nose, my chin and my forehead area, but I don't look shiny at all, I don't think. The natural finish has definitely been preserved throughout the day, and the smooth finish has pretty much stayed intact. Really, the only breakdown of this foundation I'm seeing is right in the crease under my nostril. I can just see that there's a little redness that's peeking through there. In terms of the coverage, I don't think we lost much of that throughout the day. I can maybe see this dark spot a tiny bit more than when I first applied the foundation. Now I did notice my laugh lines, they do have a little bit of settling going on, but really that's just being picky. I think that my face still looks great. So really, I'm liking this foundation. However, for $39, you're not gonna catch me buying this on a consistent basis because if I'm paying that much, then I need everything to be covered. I wanna look Photoshopped. So tomorrow, I'm gonna be testing out a drugstore powder foundation and and hopefully we can get similar or even better results at a fraction of the price. I'll see you then. All right, good morning. It is the next day and we're gonna be testing out a drugstore powder foundation to see if we can get similar or better results with a $6 product. Today we're testing the Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage Powder Foundation. And I do believe that I got a little bit better of a skin match than we got with <laughs> the Urban Decay. That was very scary. Oh yeah, 
That is like my perfect shade match. But I'm not gonna let the shade influence how I feel about the actual foundation because yesterday I was very happy with the performance of the Urban Decay foundation and we were able to kind of salvage it with the bronzer. Now the Urban Decay powder claimed to be medium buildable and this is claiming to be full coverage. All right, I don't know about full coverage because I can still see, you know, a little bit of unevenness in my skin tone underneath, but I'd say we probably achieved the same amount of coverage as the Urban Decay powder. And again, finish is incredibly smooth. I absolutely love how this is looking on my skin. It does not look dry or powdery at all. And in general, I would be comfortable with this amount of coverage. Okay, so I'll be right back. I'm gonna finish my face with a light makeup look. All right, back with a light touch of makeup, and I'm loving how my skin looks with this $6 foundation. It is evened out. Like, I do have somewhat of a discoloration situation because I do have a lot of hyperpigmentation. Wow, where is my Grammy? All right, but anyway, just as a first impression, I don't think that this looks any cheaper than the Urban Decay foundation. I think it looks just as good, just as a starting point. Now I do wanna do a side-by-side -side showing the freshly applied coverage of this Maybelline foundation versus the Urban Decay foundation. I'd love to hear in the comments if you have a preference on how they look freshly applied. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go about my day. I will come back with an update later, as well as my final thoughts on whether you should splurge or save on powder foundation. All right, here we are eight hours after applying the Maybelline powder foundation and I'm a little shook. I think the main difference between this foundation and the Urban Decay powder is that maybe I look a tiny bit more shiny on my forehead by the end of the day with this one. But other than that, we got the same, if not a little bit more coverage and I feel like it lasted a little bit better than the Urban Decay powder. Like this spot is still very well covered and in general, I'm just not seeing any foundation breakdown. I would say you can see a little bit more of my pores and the skin texture in that area, but I mean, for 35 less dollars, I'm still very happy with how this foundation performs. In fact, I think that it's gonna be a go-to when I want just something a little bit lighter than liquid and when I don't need super full coverage, full beat foundation. Also, little to no settling in any fine lines. I think that there is less settling than we got with the Urban Decay foundation in the laugh line area. So I don't wanna say it's a dupe, but I would say it is a superior affordable alternative. So in conclusion, I like the Urban Decay powder foundation. I'd like it a little bit more if it was my shade. Plus it looks really beautiful on the skin. I absolutely love the finish on it. But the $6 Maybelline Superstay full coverage powder does the same thing, if not slightly more. Felt like I got a little bit more coverage with this and a little bit more wear time without as much settling. However, I would say that the Urban Decay powder blurred my pores a little bit more and kept them smoother throughout the day. Very, very slight difference. That's me being picky. In the end, I would definitely say you can save on powder foundation. Did you like the appearance of one of these powder foundations over the other? Let me know which one in the comments below. Today's shout out goes to Nathalie. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad. And join me over in this video next where I review and swatch the new CoverGirl Exhibitionist lipsticks. They have to be the best of 2020 already. I'll see you over there. Bye.